there, I'm Kerry Decker, and tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit special. Well, at least special for me anyway. We're going to go back in time and take a look at my very first phonograph from about 50 years ago. And we're going to play an old five and a half inch single sided recording made nearly a hundred years ago. So it's going to be kind of exciting. So I hope that you stick around. Hi there, my name is Kerry Decker and welcome to another one of my videos. Now this one's going to be a little bit different uh, today. Uh, I happen to have noticed on, on uh, YouTube as I was just kind of scouring around that there seems to be a number of videos which are made of old phonographs and old phonograph records. And there's also some ones with old televisions, old tape recorders, a lot of old analog technology from 50 years ago or so. And I thought, you know what? I have still got my original phonograph that I got as a little kid about 50 years ago. Maybe even more than that. Maybe 55 years ago. A long time ago. And um, it's a, an old VM uh, portable uh, phonograph. It's called the Tri-O Speed. That's the only thing on it. There is no model number. There is no numbers on the back or underneath or anything like that. It's just a, a little phonograph that I used to play uh, all of my uh, records on. Now, VM uh, is the manufacturer of this, and of course, they're, they are the company that's known as the Voice of Music, and they were founded in uh, 1944. i got to read some notes here. By Walter Miller, and they were known mostly for making record changers, but apparently they did make uh, some complete units on their own. And uh, they used to make uh, record changers not only under their own VM label, but they used to make them uh, for uh, Zenith and Motorola and companies like that. So between all this uh, business, they, uh, they did quite well in the years. Then they also got into making tape decks during the 19, uh, I think late 1950s, and um, they were quite a viable company. But then, you know, as the 60s and everything started uh, on that uh, manufacturing started going overseas and uh, you know uh, requests for this type of company uh, also uh, with their mom and pop stores they used to sell a, 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 a lot of these through this the smaller department stores and and uh, like I said the mom and pop shops so uh, again by uh, by 1977 their business had just dried up manufacturing had gone overseas the small mom and pop stores were replaced by a big uh, electric electronics and department stores, and uh, they went out of business in July of 1977. But anyway, this was uh, an early phono from, uh, I, again, it's got to be the early 1950s when I got this, and my parents got this uh, for me back then. I don't know if it was birthday or Christmas or whatever, but anyway, it's it's a cool old, old phonograph, and uh, it says voice of music up here, but that's all, no other model number, and that uh, trio speed is written in red uh, on the front here. And um, it's, a, it's a metal turntable, and um, it's got the three speeds plus an off position, and then a, a switch and a speaker, and the, the 45 adapter is right here. And uh, it makes for a great little uh, phono. I remember, uh, you know, using it and uh, playing with it and playing with all my old uh, kids' records. Plus, I had a collection. I don't know where I got them all from, but I had an awful lot of uh, 78 RPM records uh, that I, I got um, <laughs> over the years as well. And uh, it was just a cool, simple record player, mono, you know, and I really enjoyed it. Well, the second part of what we're, go we're going to be listening to a record on this tonight, and the second part of this is the Little Wonder Records. And uh, these were records that were uh, manufactured by the Columbia Phonograph Company between 1914 and 1923. These are single-sided records. See, the back of it is completely blank. And uh, they're just a little simple record. And being about five inches uh, across, uh, they only held about a, a minute and a half to two minutes worth of music. And um, it's, it's amazing. And I used to play with these things. Uh, these these uh, records were handed down by my uncle, who I think bought them uh, from like Sears uh, catalog or something uh, way back in the uh, early 1920s. In fact, I've got about 50 of these records and everything. But I thought, well, 
what we would do tonight would be to uh, play the Arkansas Traveler. And uh, this, uh, <laughs> on this uh, Little Wonder record. And uh, so we're going to take kind of a close-up look at my phono. And then also the Arkansas Traveler, which we're going to play uh, on my phono. So uh, those of you who like old records, you're going to enjoy it. And those who like old phonographs, you're going to get to see it. So... Uh, here, let's, uh, let's take a closer look uh, at this uh, phono and record combination. Okay, and as I showed you here earlier, there is a, uh, a three-speed uh, control on here for 78, 45, and 33 and a third. So I could play all, all three sizes of the records. And uh, also there is a dial over here which, uh, let me see if you can see this. Let me just lay this over here for a moment. Okay, and this is kind of also acts as an on and off switch, but also a volume control. So I can adjust the volume manually that way. All right, a little rest where the tone arm goes, just a plastic turn arm, uh, tone arm. All righty, and uh, very easy. I think I remember there was a little screw on the front there where you could change the needle when you have to. The 45 RPM receptacle. And that's it. Like I said, they're outside of uh, the Voice of Music uh, uh, logo on the lid. There is, and, and that, and the, uh, the name of the, uh, of the phono, there is nothing more on this. So um, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's switch it on. Let's, it's on at 78. And let's listen to the Arkansas Traveler. Here we go. What might your name be? Say, what made you think I was boss here? Why, I just guess it. Well, just guess what my name is, all. <laughs> well, uh, how long have you lived here? Say, you see that hill over there? Yes. Well, that was here when I come. <laughs> Well, uh, how far is it to the next crossroads? You just follow your nose and you come to it. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, where does this road go to? It don't go anywhere. Stays right where it is. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, down the road I saw a horse with a broken leg. Why don't you kill it? People generally kill a horse with a broken leg. Well, I swan, round here we generally kill a horse with a shotgun. Oh! <laughs> hey, uh, you're a pretty smart fella, ain't ya? Yes, but ain't half as smart as my brother Bill. Uh, who is brother Bill? Why, my mother's son, of course. Oh. <laughs> hey, now, I'm a lawyer and a pretty smart one. Do I look it? Well, yeah. Now, I had to go to law not long ago about this house of mine. Well, did you have a smart lawyer? You just bet I did. He owns the house now. <laughs> Say, hey, uh, I know the hole in the roof of your house. Why don't you have it fixed? Why? Because it's been raining lately. Yes, but why don't you fix it when it's not raining? Yes, when it don't rain, it don't leak. Oh. <laughs> hey, for pity's sake, why don't you play the rest of that tune? Well, I just reckon ain't no man living smart enough to do that. Oh, yes, there is. Now, I think I can if you let me. Ah, thank you. Well, boy, tell the thunder. You're the smartest man in living, you be. Come right in. You're welcome to anything in my place. Come on in, thunder. Come in. <laughs> All righty, there it is, the Arkansas Traveler, played on my early 1950s Voice of Music Trio Speed phonograph. So, this is Kerry Decker thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye now.